What's going on, everybody? My name is Coach Stefan, and I am the host of the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. Welcome. Super freaking excited to have you here. Um, at the time of recording this, it's almost the end of February, and we're doing our scholarship challenge, our scholarship offer right now, and it has been popping. It's keeping me busy, keeping on our toes. Um, so if you guys have been listening and you're kind of like on the fence about getting some help with your fitness journey, whether it's you know burning fat, building muscle, you know, maybe increasing your performance. We work with a lot of military members and, and law enforcement that have, you know, PT tests or certain things coming up. Definitely do not miss out on this opportunity. We're giving away a month of free coaching towards our hero transformation program. So definitely take advantage of that. All right. So I'm going to dive right in. Oh, and by the way, you can go to pursuithp.com or you can go find us on Instagram at under, underscore pursuit HP. And there's an application link right there on our little uh, link tree. So now I'm going to dive in high protein, low carb. Okay. This is probably the most popular diet, uh, that people do when they want to lose weight. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of backstory. So I did go to school for exercise science, graduated with my bachelor's in exercise science and a minor in business. I went to Arizona state university. And one of the classes we took there was a class specifically about how to read scientific literature. The reason that's important as a coach is because I need to look at these studies that that say and all there's all types of studies like high pro you know what are the effects on weight loss on high protein low carb high carb low fat moderate protein i mean like every combination between the macros protein carbs and fats that you can think of highs and lows and mixture and the the funny thing is is like most people actually didn't lose more fat on the high protein low carb and i am going to tell you exactly why that might not be the best solution for you. And I'm going to tell you how you can look the best, like the, the most full and shredded and hard all the time. So do not go anywhere. This episode is going to be fire. So high protein, low carb. The reason that it doesn't really work is, is a couple things. Most people that do it, they're not really tracking their calorie intake and their macros. That's your first mistake. If you don't know your numbers, if you're not actually weighing out your food, you know, I'm just talking about maybe using my fitness pal. I don't know what food tracker you use. That's what we use. Um, using my fitness pal, scanning your stuff, actually measuring it out, being accurate, you know, weighing out your meat raw versus cooked, like everything matters. Cause a lot of people say, well, lot, high protein, low carb doesn't work for me. I'm like, and I'm not saying it does or doesn't, but I'm like, okay, why doesn't it work for you? And they're like, well, yeah, I just like cut out this and this and I didn't lose weight or, oh, oh, it worked really well for me. I'm like, well, what'd you do? And they go, I cut out bread and pasta and sugar, you know, and all this stuff. And I lost all this weight. My dad's actually on paleo right now, which is meats, nuts, fruits, and vegetables and sweet potatoes. And he's lost a bunch of weight. Why? It's not because he's on paleo. It's because he put himself unknowingly in a calorie deficit because if you're just eating meats, nuts, and fruits, and vegetables, guess what you're not eating? the chips, the, uh, the beer, the, all the other things that you're doing. So it's an elimination diet. So low carb, high protein is kind of that a little bit, but I'm not talking about the high protein, low carb that you track. If you do that, you can have whatever, let's say you're having 180 grams of protein a day. I'll give you like my example. If I went high protein, low carb, my macros would probably be 185 grams of protein. And I only do that when I'm in a deficit, by the way. There's no point in doing a high protein, low carb on a maintenance, in my opinion. So I would do like 180 grams of protein, maybe like 100 grams of carbs. I don't want to go super low and that's low for me, but I, I want to be able to perform in the gym. If you have really low carbs, your performance is going to go down. And that's part of the reason that I'm not a huge fan, which I'll dive into in just a moment. Um, so, and then maybe my fats would be like, I just thrown out a number, make 112, like it's high fat, right? Because protein you can't use as energy like like your body doesn't use it as fuel to like exercise and create atp it can from carbs or fat so you either have to have like both moderate or it has to be a sliding scale you know a uh, high carb ish lower fat or high fat lower carb right now you can there are elimination stuff like the keto which is like zero carb don't do that diet uh <laughs> but I think that for me, I would do something like that. All right. Those would kind of be my macros. Um, 
another thing you have to think about is like, if I'm not tracking those macros, if I'm telling somebody I'm on a low carb diet and low carb don't, diets don't work for me, my first question is, is going to be, well, did you eat low carb and high protein? Because that matters. Well, not really. Well, why didn't low carb work for you? Oh, I was hungry all the time or whatever. Okay. Well, if you would ate more protein, you would have more satiety. You would have been more full. Uh, also, because you didn't eat enough protein, you're probably in too much of a deficit. And if you're in a calorie deficit, you actually need to increase your protein roughly from about five to 10%. Because if you're in a deficit, you're more likely to lose weight, right? Some of that can be muscle. So to offset it, offset it to have a little bit of insurance, we actually increase the protein a little bit. Any good coach knows this. So some people keep it the same. I don't. I like to increase it because I don't want to lose any muscle. Why? Because you work your ass off to build muscle and it takes a very, very, very long time. But fat can be put on and gain in the same 24 hours. I mean, put off and burn. So fat is just, it happens really quick. Muscle does not. So I want to do everything I can when I'm in a deficit. Now, the reason that I'll tell you why I like and I dislike high protein, low carb. Um, well, before I do that, though, I, I do want to touch a little bit on the research because I totally space this part. The research is important because they take big studies of people that are like within a range with their age, their sex, their height, their weight, all this stuff. But they're like all different, you know, maybe cultures, uh, which actually does have an influence on some stuff. They've actually, you know, uh, epigenetics and and cultural people like a Samoans. If you ever seen Samoans, they're just like bigger people, most of them. Um, they're not going to be the same as an Asian American. So there, there's differences. So usually they actually take the same race and they're like, oh, in a you know Caucasian male that's 45 to 50 years old, that's 180 to 200 pounds, uh, you know, and that's five, 10 to six foot, we put them on a, this diet. So it's like, it's pretty fair. And yeah, they have different jobs and maybe different activity levels and whatever, um, but they try to create as much, uh, as much like, they basically try to make everybody the same because then we have a constant and a variable, right? So in any scientific experiment, you need a constant, which is something that doesn't change, which would be the diet. Everybody's eating, you know, a certain amount of macros or whatever energy. And then the variable would be just like, obviously the person, different genetics, maybe different jobs, stuff like that. So something to think about is I hear a lot of people say, well, this doesn't work for me, or this diet doesn't work for me. And something that's like that bothers me is they probably weren't doing it right. And they probably don't really know. They're just actually saying that because they want to use like their genetics as an excuse. Um, or they want to use like, well, I'm a, I'm my own person, which you totally are, but you're, because you're your own person, you actually have to go through your own studies, your own experiments and be like, look, I'm going to actually do high protein, low carb, I'm going to track all my food for 30 days. And I want to see how my body responds to it. If you haven't done that, right, or two months or three months, you can't say high protein, low carb does or does not work for me. You actually don't know because you didn't stick to it. Right. And that's probably the number one mistake I see people say, well, this diet didn't work. This diet didn't work. If I was a fly on the wall, did you really do the keto diet? Or did you do the keto diet? Like, really, I really didn't eat any carbs, but you're eating 30 pieces of bacon a day. Um, like in a bunch of dark chocolate, I, you know what I mean? Like that's not how it's really supposed to be done. That's not the most effective way. And the problem with these like super restrictive diets, even high protein, low carb can be is people look at it and they're like, oh, this is my way to cheat. This is my way to get away with as much as possible. I see it a lot on keto. People do it and they're like, I can eat anything. They'll go to the grocery store. They'll get, uh, I actually did an episode called how not to do keto diet. They'll get like these keto snacks and these key, keto uh, Reese's cup things and like, do the ingredients are crap and everything. And they're like, well, I did the keto diet and they feel good about themselves, but they don't get any of the results they want. So now that I'm done bashing keto, I'll tell you what I like and dislike about low carb. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Low carb, high protein, but you have to understand that you won't know if it works for you until you do it. Now I will say, I think it works for every single person that I've ever coached for a certain amount of time and you can do it the right way and you can do it the wrong way. The right way of doing a low carb, high protein is actually doing something called carb cycling, which means you don't stay at low carb. The reason you don't want to stay at low carb is because 
your brain runs off glucose and your muscles run off glycogen, which are both broken down carbohydrates. If you're low carb for long enough, you will start down regulating your metabolism for the most part. Um, yes, you can. There's people that stay pretty low carb and high fat, and they say they feel good. That's totally fine. But everybody that I've ever met that actually has a good amount of muscle and has a great physique doesn't eat a low carb diet. I'll say that again. Everybody that I've met that has a pretty like muscular, lean, hard physique doesn't have a like super restrictive carb diet. In fact, every fitness coach that I know, I know a lot in this industry, used to be the person, I used to be them, when they like cut out carbs, did a bunch of cardio, fasted cardio, they thought that was the answer. And then they started actually eating more and lifting more and resting more. And now they have banging bodies. Okay. So you have to understand that like super restriction and more exercise is usually actually not, uh, I know it sounds like too good to be true, but it's actually not the solution. Um, the reason I like low carb diets is a couple things. Number one, when you, and I know this is kind of opposite what I was saying, but there's some benefits. When you put somebody on a low carb diet, immediately they will lose water weight because carbohydrates hold water, right? Carbohydrate. So usually when people cut out like bread or pasta or sugar, whatever, they go, I lost 10 pounds in a week. Um, a lot of that is from water, which doesn't really matter in the short term because they look better. And if you look better, do you think that you're more likely to stay on that diet? Because you're like, wow, this is giving me immediate feedback and positive results. Yes, right? So now that person lost 10 pounds and they feel good and like it's working. So they actually stick to the diet and they actually keep cutting out the pasta and the processed foods and the soda and the beer for 30 days, 60 days. So that's a really good positive, okay? Another positive is it teach, teaches people generally to be addiction. Most people are addicted to their hunger and sugar. So, uh, and sugar is a really hard one for me. So if you're on a low carb diet, you can't really have a lot of sugar because sugar is pure carbohydrates, right? Like one thing of soda is like, I don't know, 30 carbs, 30 grams of sugar, and doesn't fill you up at all. In fact, it makes you more hungry. And if you're only having a hundred carbs a day, you don't want to do that. Cause that's like a third of your carbs. Right. Um, so just by happenstance, it's cutting out the shit out of your diet. So there's a lot of positive things. The only thing, I mean, like one of the things though, I will say that I don't like is this. Number one, if you're on it too long, it will downregulate your metabolism. Number two, most people feel very, very lethargic the first week or two, which is totally normal because you're like have lower blood sugar. But the, the thing is, is like, if you're in the gym, especially strength training, the only point of strength training, okay, I just wanna be really, really clear, unless you're doing it for performance or athleticism, but if you're trying to look good, right? Like AKA lose body fat, build muscle. If you're trying to do that, your sole purpose should be, I need to put enough stimulus and stress on the muscle to create micro tears, to damage it. Then I'm gonna go eat and refill my glycogen, which is your carbs and your protein, because you do need both. You can't just eat protein and no carbs. And I'm gonna repair my muscle and it's gonna grow back bigger and stronger. And when it grows back, not just stronger, but when it grows back bigger, it actually helps me burn more calories and it increases my metabolism. That's it. That's the goal. It's very, very hard to do that when you go to the gym with 70% of your normal intensity versus 100, right? You're missing 30% because you feel unfueled. You don't have the proper fuel, right? Like your muscles run off of glycogen, which is carb storage, and your blood sugar is glucose, which is basically, you know, broken down carbs in your bloodstream because carbs convert to sugar. And so you have to understand that like, if you don't have that, like go on a, go eat 50 carbs and then go to like all day and then go to the gym at night and tell me how you feel. You're gonna be like, I feel so weak. I feel lethargic. I feel whatever, right? Then go eat a bowl of oatmeal two hours before the gym and tell me how that session is. It's gonna be great. So having a low carb diet is to me is a, it, it's taking out something that's not even the root issue. The root issue, if you have to go low carb, which isn't a diet that I would say that nobody can be on, is your activity level sucks. That's it. If you have more activity level, guess what? You can eat more carbs. I used to live by a model called earn your carbs. I did it for years and years and years. And basically my carbs changed every day, right? And I didn't even track my carbs, but I just knew. I was like, okay, so my baseline carbs are around you know, 180 to 200 
carbs a day. That's basically what I ate. But if I like had a really exerting day and I was like doing a bunch of running around, I could just like feel, I might have an extra bowl of oatmeal, 25, 35 carbs. If I went on a long bike ride, I might have an extra 85 carbs, you know, like, and, but my fat stayed the same and my protein stayed the same. The only thing I changed was my carbs. And I was able to actually put on muscle and cut just by ma manipulating one macronutrient. My training really didn't even change. And I was pretty sporadic. Like my strength training was very much the same every week, but I added certain things. Like maybe one day I would go to jujitsu. Maybe one day I would go on a bike ride. Maybe one day I would do a run. So I was doing all these like, I don't know, kind of cardio activities or functional training activities outside of my weightlifting regimen. But all I did is just give my body more fuel to accomplish it. If I wasn't doing jack shit and I just sat on the couch all day, guess what? I might have 150 carbs. I might go on the lowest end because I didn't do anything. Like, why would I need to eat those carbs? Now, what I didn't know is that's actually a really bad method because if I'm eating less carbs on my rest day, which is a very common mistake, if I go work out the next day, my body's not running off the carbs I eat that day. It's actually mostly running off the carbs you ate 48 to 72 hours um, previous because glycogen usually takes that long to synthesize and actually go break down in the body and be used. So, you know, it actually sets you up for failure. So now what I do is I basically eat the same carbs almost every day with small changes, right? If I didn't work out today, I'm okay with cutting out my oatmeal in the morning. If I'm going to work out, I will have my oatmeal. Like it's that small, it's that insignificant of a change. It's just like one adding just one thing, right? Or if you worked out, maybe you, like I say, on days I work out, I'll eat a banana after because I want to spike my blood sugar. I want a lot of sugars for muscle recovery. If I don't do like weightlifting and I do cardio, I might not eat fruit. I might eat something else. So there's a, there's a couple of different like things you can do with a high protein, low carb diet. Now, I will say another thing that I kind of am not a big fan on the high protein, low carb diet is you don't look I don't think you, most people look very good. Part of the reason is there's a couple things that are going to make you look like, let's just say you have a, a really good percent body fat, like anywhere from like 12 to 16% body fat for males. It's pretty good. You'll probably have like some top upper abs. So, I mean, solid, like, right. You you're, don't have a big belly. You're good for, for people like that. And you know, you could be heavier too, but let's just say that's where you are. The only things that are going to make you look leaner is losing body fat, but let's just say that's not going to happen tomorrow. It's having enough carbs in your system to where you look full. Like, I mean, you can tell when you feel flat and deflated and you can tell when you got a good pump. So you're not that necessarily pumped up like post-workout pump, but you feel full. If you ever like crushed sushi or like ate a bunch and you felt like your muscles were full, that's just water being soaked up into your muscles from the carbs you ate. Just to let you know. That's your glycogen storage filling up. So it doesn't last because if you overeat carbs, the next day you'll wake up and you'll feel bloated and watery and right because it's water. So a lot of times you have to kind of find like a moderate amount of carbs. You also need a pretty high sodium intake because that will make you look vascular. And I know because what I used to do when I did fitness modeling is you basically cut a lot of carbs and water from your diet and sodium like a couple days out. And then basically 48 hours out, this is what bodybuilders kind of do too. You carb load and eat a bunch of carbs and you fill your muscles up as much as they can. And then you have sodium and then maybe glycerol or wine and you become super vascular. So now you looked flat and not vascular. And now you look full and vascular, which is what everybody kind of wants to look like if you want a great physique or look anything like a bodybuilder. Now um, that's not a permanent thing. That's very temporary. But one way you can like temporarily do it is have a pretty good amount of carbs every single day, have a healthy high sodium level, not from table salt and stuff like that, but like uh, pink Himalayan Celtic sea salt. I put that stuff on everything. Um, a lot of water, water is super important. And I look like anytime I take my shirt off, my muscles don't look like unshapely or flat or whatever. And I don't have a pump, but they look relatively like, defined and hard. And right now I don't have, I actually probably have like a pretty highest body fat percentage I've had in a very long time, but my muscles still look good because I'm having a decent amount of carbohydrates. So it's something very important to understand. 
yes, I could probably go next week and go super low carb. And what will happen is I'll lose a bunch of water for over seven days. And then when I start eating carbs again, I'll actually fill up right away my muscles, but the water won't be on me. So that's the only way to kind of counteract that. You'll look, I mean, very temporarily, but you'll look dry er and full. The only thing is about 24 hours after, because you're like shocked your body with this huge carb is you will, will look bloated. And I used to do this at pool parties back in the Air Force. I used to like go super low carb uh, a week out. Then the day before a pool party, I would carb up or like the morning of. But so I'd lose all this water, piss it all out. And then I'd show up to the pool party looking pretty jacked and shredded just by manipulating my water and glycogen storage. So there, I mean, there's some good things about it. Um, I will say that for most of our clients, we don't put them on a low carb, high protein diet, at least not longer than like a week or two. And it just, it's, it varies, right? I don't know how much weight you have to lose or what your body fat is or your activity level. So it's just a very general statement. And the reason we don't do that is because we know that the body starts to downregulate metabolism specifically with carbohydrates. Now it could be with any deficit you want. Okay. You could have I mean, like, for example, if you're eating 3000 calories, it's 3000 calories, right? Well, then let's say you're eating 200 grams of protein. You can kind of manipulate the carbs and fats how you want. In theory, your metabolism might kind of be the same, but people know that fat actually slows down your metabolism, not necessarily the way you think, but it slows down how you metabolize things. For example, if you have coffee in the morning and you have some fats with it, like some MCT oils, it actually, I, I, I hope I'm saying this right it activates your sphincter muscle and it actually will like slow drip the caffeine because it slows down your digestive system, okay? Um, same thing post-workout. Any bodybuilder will tell you to stay away from fats post-workout. Why? Because fats can slow down the digestion of things. It's a, it takes longer to break down. So you actually wanna avoid those post-workout and just do a fast-acting carb and a fast-acting protein like a fruit or some type of like, you know, single glucose sugar. That's why people do sour patch kids, all this stuff. And then like a whey protein isolate or egg white, something with like no fat in it. Um, so I, and I, I just want to have this conversation. So you guys understand, because I think that, and I, I actually see stuff like this every week on social media, the industry still thinks that like a low carb, high protein diets, the way to go. Um, no, the way to go is what I would say for most people is actually have a moderate amount of carbs every day. And then you just increase your activity level. And you might say, well, I dude, I'm so busy. I don't have time. Mm -mm, I don't buy it. Dude, we work with business owners and entrepreneurs that work 70, 80 hours a week. We, we work with cops that work four or five twelves, you know, traveling nurses, all these people that are probably way busier than you or just as busy. And they make time. I work a lot. And yeah, you're like, well, you're a, you're a fitness trainer. Yeah, well, when I wasn't and I worked as a project manager and was going to college and getting certifications, I still worked out five or six days a week because it was a big priority to me. And the cool thing about working out more to, to lose weight versus eating less is eating less sucks. Eating less sucks. And there's zero benefit to it. Like, yes, you lose weight. What else I mean, it depends what you're eating, but like what other benefit besides the fat loss do you get from eating less? I know when I go low carb or I'm eating less, I'm more grumpy. I'm like, you know, hangry. I'm more lethargic. I don't feel as alert. That sucks. Why would I do that? Versus what I can do is say, you know what? Instead of reducing my calories, what if I kept them the same, but I just worked out for 30 minutes more? Or what if I added in cardio? Or what if I did a little more strength training or added one day? And you might say, well, it's the same thing. You're just going to get hungry and eat back all the calories. No, you won't. I promise you. I swear to God, you won't. Every single time I cut, I'm actually starting a cut right now. Mark my word. What is it? February, end of February. Pro I promise you that in like two months from now, I'm going to be shredded and I probably won't change my nutrition at all. In fact, I might even eat more carbs. Part of the reason is I'm going to start adding walking on the treadmill in a weighted vest three to four days a week. I'm going to add in more functional bodybuilding style workouts. So that's kind of like intervals within my workout. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not reducing my carbs. I'm not reducing. And, and this is the benefit. You might say, well, why can't I just reduce my carbs? I, I don't have time to work out. Yes. If you literally don't have time or you're not willing to sacrifice time, 
trying to lose weight through nutrition is always better than exercise because it takes no time. In fact, it saves you time because eating takes time and you're eating less, right? So that would actually be the most time efficient. But you're also missing all the benefits. If you're strength training and eating more carbs, what are you doing? Probably, probably building muscle. Well, what does muscle do? It burns calories at rest or doing NEAT. So non-exercise activity thermogenesis, like doing the dishes, walking your dogs, um, you know, going to work, moving up and down the stairs. If you have more muscle, you're burning more calories, which means you can eat more. So by training more, instead of reducing your calories, you're actually helping the long-term goal of you being jack shredded, lean, and sexy. Reducing your calories really doesn't do the job. Now, there is a maximum barrier where you can't just keep training more and more and more and more. Like at some point, it has to come from nutrition. But if you're only training two or three days a week and you're trying to like really cut back on your nutrition, I highly suggest just trying to make exercise more of a part of your day. And you're going to build a better physique. Your muscles are going to look better. Your cardio is going to get better. Um, who knows what your exercise routine looks like, but you're probably going to be more flexible. You're probably going to be more mobile. And just being fit, regardless of the looks, being fit and feeling fit and feeling strong and capable and like good cardio, when you have good cardio, you can feel it. You feel different, literally sitting, walking, talking, your brain. Like if you get a workout in the morning, your brain's like firing on all cylinders. Why would you not want that? You get all those benefits. Helps with depression, helps with anxiety, helps with mental clarity. But no, I, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to get all those benefits. So I'm just going to eat less. I'm just going to do the low carb thing because that's super easy for me. It is, you're, you're, playing the, you're playing a plateau game. You will plateau. And then the cool thing is, well, it's not cool. I'm being sarcastic. The, <laughs> the cool thing is you have nowhere to go. Like you lower your carbs. You can't just keep lowering them and lowering them and lowering them and lowering them. Like you, you ha there has to be something. Now, if you're on carb cycling and you're lowering and raising them and lowering and raising them, yes, you kind of combat the staying at a plateau. But my clients can tell you carb cycling is kind of a lot of work, right? It's way easier to have a, remember I said in the beginning, you need a constant and a variable. So this is what you're going to do. Nutrition is your constant. Yep, you heard me. Why is nutrition your constant and exercise is your variable? Great question, guys. This is why. Your nutrition, well, I, let's talk about exercise first. Your exercise, I don't care what you say, you cannot burn the same amount of calories every single day. It's impossible. You're going to be off at least one calorie. You just won't. Like nobody does the exact same movements, the exact same breaths, the exact same things every day. You, you literally can't. And I'm sorry if you're like, well, my Apple Watch, my Whoop. No, unless you're hooked up to a metabolic cart and a lab all day long, you won't know. So you have to just say, well, my, my range is probably, let's say I burn 2,700 to 3,200 calories, 500 calorie range. Okay. But your nutrition, your nutrition, you actually can. If you ate one banana that weighed 50 grams, and I'm just giving you theory, and one rice cake and one packet of tuna, and it was the same thing one day and the next day, you could literally eat the exact same amount of calories, literally. And that's what the macro tracking and the calorie is, is like nutrition's are constant. And then the variable, well, the variable is the thing we change, which means if exercise is the variable, it has to be right. Because we can't make movement the constant because it's literally impossible. So because of that, exercise is the variable. And guess what? The variable you change, that's part of the experiment. You're like, ooh, let's, let's vary this. Let's change it to see how it influences. And people are doing it the wrong way. They're making exercise their baseline and, 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 and maneuvering nutrition. Now I will say, before I get myself in trouble, when I cut, I do the opposite in a way because you can manipulate your nutrition effectively if you don't have a lot of weight to lose. And I'm going to tell you an example. Right now, I'm eating about 250 grams of carbs, I think like 89 grams of fat or something like 80 grams of fat and like 185 grams of protein. When I go cut, I could do a couple things. I could either reduce my carbs, that's like really all I have to do and, and drop my fat and that's it. 
but I maybe will only be in a, like a 300 calorie deficit and I'm impatient when I do fat loss. So I want to help that. So I'm also going to do cardio and let's say I'm burning 300 calories a day. So now I'm in a 600 calorie deficit. Okay. That's good. That's double. I'll get there twice as fast. Um, so that is a method. I could change both. I could also sit there and say, well, I want to keep my nutrition the same and I'm just going to add in cardio. Yes, I could do that too. Or I could say, I'm not going to add in any cardio, but I'm just going to like reduce my calories, which is kind of what I'm talking about in the beginning. So you can kind of like change one, change the other one or change both. The thing again about changing the nutrition and that's it is unless you're at your maximum threshold, like this is all I can work out. I can physically take, this is all I have time for it's more beneficial to work out more versus your nutrition. Now, some coaches might say, well, that's not true. It's way easier, you know, to just do the calories. Yeah, but that's just being lazy. Like you should be able to make it to the gym three to five days a week. I think around four is an, isn't realistic for most people. If I saw all the time you're on Netflix, all the time you're on Instagram, all the time you're freaking playing around, doing random crap and saying you don't have time, all the time you waste, you can make it to the gym four days a week for 45 to 60 minutes. I guarantee you, right? Unless you're the, some special case, which you're probably not. So if that, you know what I mean? Like you got to make time. I've had points in my life where I make freaking work 16 hours a day and I still go to the gym. So, you know, like that's just part of it. And I have a kid and I have a family and I got dogs and I own a business and all this stuff. And yes, I did that before I was a fitness trainer full time all the time too, when I was going to college. So it really is about what you prioritize. The benefit, obviously, just to touch on this one more time about going to the gym is the fact that you're getting the mental benefit. You're going to actually get to your goal because your goal is not just to lose the weight. It's to lose the weight and keep it off. The only way you can keep it off is by helping your metabolism and setting in good habits. So if your habit is work out the least as possible because I'm lazy and I'll just manipulate the nutrition, that's not helping anybody. What's helping you is being like, I'm going to be in the gym most days because I'm going to make it a habit. I'm going to make the gym a place I like to train. I also love the mental benefit. I feel more confident because I'm putting in the work. Eating less doesn't make you more confident. It just sucks. It's just like, wow, this sucks. I'm, I'm more unhappy because I don't get the food I want. I'm more grumpy because I'm hungry all the time. Like there's, there's really no benefits in being in a deficit. Like they're really not from food. And I, I can tell you this, I, unless you're doing all super high intensity exercises, if you go lift, yes, it's going to make you hungry, but you don't have to eat back all of it. Especially if you're eating whole foods, you might be surprised, like, and it's impossible to track how many calories you burn from a weightlifting session, by the way. It's very, very challenging. But let's say your Apple Watch says, oh, you burn 480 calories. Cool. But there's an afterburn effect from when you lift. So let's say you burnt seven or 800 calories. The chances are you're probably not going to eat back seven or 800 calories. You'll probably eat back 500. Okay, well, you still burn 380 calories extra, plus you got the mental benefit, plus you gain the confidence, plus you have the mental clarity. Plus you gain muscle, which helps your metabolism in the future. You see where I'm going? A high protein, low carb diet is not really the answer. The way that I'm going to stay in shape for the next 40 plus years I'm alive, hopefully, is I'm going to do exactly that. I'm not going to be restricting my carbs. I'm just going to be training more and more intelligently and more frequently. And if I need to reduce my carbs a little bit, sure, but I'm never going to go low carb. I don't think I'll ever do it again. Um, I just, I don't think there's a point I have tried it before and it just didn't really bring me a lot of benefit. So I know this was a longer episode, but I hope at least the last like 15 minutes really honed in, you know, specifically about the diet, but like, you know, it makes, makes you think like, what should I be doing? If you were my client, I'd probably tell you a lot of the same things I'm telling you right now. Uh, but if you're not part of pursuit, uh, definitely like, you know, take this and, and please use it. But if you do have any questions, you can hit me up on social media. My Instagram is at skfitness underscore training, or you can hit us up um, on Instagram for our company, which is at pursuit underscore HP. Like I said in the begin beginning, we are doing that scholarship offer. So if you need help with your nutrition, this is literally the perfect time. Um, we do create custom training and nutrition programs for people. So depending on where you are and your schedule and your body type and your goals, your program is going to look different. Maybe you are on low carb for a little bit. 
But like you just saying like, oh, this is the only thing that works for me or this doesn't work for me. You probably don't even know. You probably really don't know. And to know you have to stick on something and to stick on something, you need a solid plan. You need some accountability. You need somebody to guide you, which is literally why we're here. So if you're interested, you can go to our website, uh, pursuehp.com. You can fill it out. Uh, you can, we have it too on social media. So that might even be an easier way to go check it out. Um, I do appreciate you guys listening in. And if you have any podcast episode requests, let me know and I will get them out. Appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time.